Hey everyone, Tommy V from 8-1 Real Estate. Just wanted to make a quick video about some mortgage terms. There's a lot of jargon out there, so I made a glossary. And if you'd like to get a copy, follow the link below and I'll send you a free copy of this whole glossary. It has a lot of terms so you don't look like a novice when you're talking about real estate. Let me pull up my screen here. All right, this is going to be the starter edition of the real estate glossary. Starting right off the bat, there's two major buckets for when we're talking about real estate, SFR and MFR. SFR is single family residence. This is going to be one dwelling unit on a property. When you think about a regular house that someone lives in, this is an SFR. The other kind is MFR, multifamily residence. This is traditionally going to be two to four units. Technically, it could be five and above, but that's when you start to go into commercial True MFR is typically two to four units. If we're looking at an investor ad for a property, like we're looking at a wholesale deal, the term net to seller, that is going to be the whole amount that you're going to have to pay. And then the seller is going to get the proceeds from it. So the seller may want 80,000 and then the wholesaler wants to make a $5,000 profit. So that means that they're going to send it out for 85,000 and then they will turn around and give the seller 80. ARV, this is the after repair value. This is most applicable to people that flip houses, but it can also be important when you're analyzing a rental property and trying to figure out what your exit strategy might be. Lending terms, this is where we get in the weeds a little bit. There's two main kinds of lending transactions. One is a purchase. You do not own the property, you're getting the loan money to buy the property and then own it. Option two is a cash out refinance. You already own the property, either free and clear, or it has a loan on it already. And you're going to get another mortgage to replace that first mortgage and potentially get some cash back in your pocket. When it comes to cash out refis or regular financing, there are usually strings attached for how long you must hold the property before you can sell it or you can get the cash back out. Typically, the seasoning period is anywhere from six months to one year. This is to help stabilize the housing market and to help the lender be confident that they're actually going to get their money back. Because if you buy the property and the six months later pay it off, they're not going to get all the interest over that they were projected over the 30 years of that fixed rate loan. So they want you to hold the loan because they want to get their interest. Next is LTV. This is loan to value ratio. This is calculated between the appraised value and the loan amount. So if you have a $100,000 house and you're trying to get a loan for $80,000, that would be an 80% loan to value ratio. For commercial loans, those are typically going to be 30% down. A conventional investor loan can be anywhere from 5 to 25% down. An owner-occupied is going to be have the lowest uh, the lowest down payment requirement, therefore the highest loan to value ratio. For example, FHA financing, first time home buyer, owner occupied, typically can be three and a half percent down. In fact, as a physical therapist or a healthcare professional, there are some physician structured loans where you can actually get it with zero percent down. And we'll cover that in a different video. The next one's going to be your debt to income ratio or DTI. And what this is, they take how much money you make per month, they divide it by how much all your loan and expenses are per month, and they come out with a percentage. Every lender is different. Ballpark, they want you to be 45% or better. Some will lend up to 55%, but of course, that'll come at a premium. It might be a little more pricey, and maybe not as good of an interest rate. When we shift gears and we're talking about strictly investments, investment properties, usually in an LLC, this thing is called DSCR, debt service coverage ratio. All this means that is that a regular loan, they look at your W-2s, they look at all your loans, they look at your loan to value, they look at the DTI, and they're trying to calculate how risky it is to loan to you to get that property. When it comes to an investment property and we're doing a DSCR, all they care about is the appraised value of the property and the projected rent for that property. That's all they care about. 
They care that the rent is going to be larger by a certain amount than the mortgage payment. And that by their calculations, if it is this much higher, then it's going to be a less risky loan. Traditionally, that number can be 1.2. So as the example I said here, if you have a $1,000 loan payment, they want the rent coming in to be 1200 to give themselves a cushion. Makes it less risky. Again, going back to loans, we have two big buckets of loans, QM loans. These are regular loans that are that use Federal Reserve money. Fannie Mac, Freddie, or Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac. There's gonna be FHA, VA, USDA, conventional, regular loans. They're very cookie cutter. They're they're all boxes. You check this, 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 boom, this is what you get. That's it. There's no flexibility, there's no wiggle room. You either meet it or you don't. Very black and white. The other category is gonna be non-QM. Uh, these are going to be the wild, wild west of loans. Every company has their own rules. Every company makes their own exceptions, their own criteria. It's kind of a sliding scale. Maybe you have a DSCR of 1.2, a credit score of 720, a loan to value of 60%. That's They put it into their system and it'll spit out a number. And every company makes their own rules and requirements. Usually these are more flexible. These almost always come with a premium. Sometimes they're less paperwork. Sometimes they're about the same amount of paperwork. And our mortgage, adjustable rate mortgage, these were the things that caused the housing market to crash in 2008. Stay away from them. Unfortunately, a lot of commercial financing is adjustable rate. And that might cause commercial real estate to get in trouble this year and next year. A fixed rate mortgage. This is what we love. We love having a fixed rate mortgage where the interest is going to stay consistent for a long time, but the property is going to appreciate over time. It's a no-brainer. If your numbers work now, they'll for sure work later. PMI, private mortgage insurance. This is where you pay the insurance company. They take that money and they go buy an insurance policy on you. So if you quit paying your loan, they get to cash in on the insurance policy. This is typically when the loan to value is less than 20%. So if you're looking at an FHA, 3.5% down, you're going to have an extra fee on top of your loan until that LTV gets below 20%. One way to kind of hack that is you buy a property, you improve it, make it better, let it appreciate a couple years, and then you get another appraisal. And if that property is now increased in value enough to where what you owe and what it's worth, and that is greater than a 20% gap, they can take off the PMI. It doesn't necessarily have to be a long time. So again, these are some very basic real estate terms. Again, if you want to copy this, I'm happy to email it to you. This is a five-page document, a lot of valuable stuff. If you'd like to get a copy, leave a comment below or click the link and I'll send it to your email. Thanks for watching.